All right, what's up, guys? Connor Ferguson and Rob Gray here uh, to preview uh, the Saturday spring football game uh, happening at Jack Trice Stadium, 11 a.m. kickoff. If you haven't heard that yet, I've seen it out there a little bit. I feel like it's out there a lot less. I'm getting asked about when's kickoff, when is this a lot. But uh, we're here to preview the spring game real quick before we start this thing. Uh, Cyclone Fanatics coverage of Iowa State spring football is once again presented by our friends at A Plus Lawn and Landscape. Remember our friends at A Plus Lawn and Lands- Landscape uh, for your lawn treatments all season long. Let the pros handle your chemicals. Uh, visit aplusslawn.com for details on all of the other great things A Plus can do for your home, like irrigation, lighting, design, and building projects and more. Thanks to A Plus Lawn and Landscape for sponsoring our coverage of the Cyclones this spring uh, and bringing you guys uh, this podcast previewing a uh, spring football game. It's a great time of year, Rob. Hockey playoffs, everything's going on. NBA playing games. NBA playing games that I found out was a playing game about ten minutes after I tweeted you, yep. knowing the Lakers would pull it out in the playing round. Three and zero all time. Made the finals last year out of the playing. Hey, we're we're a playing program. That's what it is in Los Angeles. Doesn't matter where you finish in the standings as long as it's <laughs> top ten. Oh yeah, still no. be top two in the league. You're absolutely correct. Uh no, I uh, I've been really excited to get to the spring game i know for you know a few years it was we didn't have one here and you know it just feels like there's a void with having all these practices that you're not watching then you obviously we it was carson willich this year but you you expect like hey there's going to be this detrimental injury that just happens out of nowhere and you know if you finally get the spring game back i'm ready to very much overreact to this after saturday's game I know your message coming on here was don't. It's a little bit. Don't different. react. Yeah, it was uh, don't react at all. This Saturday. underreact. I yeah, mean, you know, the, there's always a, and I'll be doing it for Cyclone Fanatic and the Gazette. Five things to watch. Could very just as easily as someone mentioned to me. I think it was Randy Peterson. I might do five things what not to watch. You know, uh, that's you know, because you're not yeah. gonna you're not gonna learn much. But it is a way if the weather's well, no matter what the weather, to get the tailgate crews all together um to uh you know get that feel of being a, a game day experience at jack Trice stadium and see the guys running around you get a little bit of scrimmage taste of scrimmage you'll usually see a couple guys make a few plays that pop and then no it's all over and we get to briefly talk to matt campbell and select players on the field so um we'll get everything they say yeah i we, i expect a close tight finish down to the end of the game i want to ask about clock management or oh, game that's management good, yeah that, that's yeah that's very important. that's gonna be my angle for that for that post game story for great. sure and then you can ask about uniforms too yeah hey, they might be unveiled saturday yeah that was uh the jack trice ones were unveiled uh last year at the spring game so i wouldn't so, be shocked to see them on saturday correct me if i'm wrong is the jack trice thing going to be an annual thing now or i don't that, know what's that not mentioned i'd like i'd like to I see think that it should be i you guys remember the pittsburgh penguins had those like classic blue like I think they were kind of a faux back Terti- tertiary. They, well, they technically they were tertiary, but the same shade of tertiary. I know what tertiary means. I know it's not a shade, yeah, but it yeah. was like this beautiful light blue, and they would just wear it like eight nine times a year, kind of like the stars did a little bit with their winter classic jerseys. I love stuff like that. I mean, I, yeah, wear them once a year. It'd be cool. Yeah. I think. Or <laughs> I mean, new design every year, like a city. I I don't know if you could swing that. Do a, I'm not do sure a what city, the logistics of that. Do were. a city jersey. Yeah, I would be your Jack Trice jersey. That's That'd all be it would be. No, there'd have to be a city too. I mean, we're, we're can... going far afield here. I, it, I says a can. On, it says Ames on the I, helmet. That's I, enough. City. I opened a can of worms when yeah, I. Yeah, this I, is I, a I uniform podcast uniforms. now. Thanks to A Plus uh, Lawn Care. Appreciate you guys again for uh, sponsoring this one. Uh, do you want to go position by position? Because yeah. I'm I'm really really excited to see uh, how JJ Cole looks in this game, and also how Connor Moberly, you know, performs in kind of his first. Do you call the spring game a true game set? You guys know what I'm trying to say. His first. Well, Coach Campbell talked about fans it when, in the stands on field action. When we got him on Monday, it's the hybrid. first time at this level playing where there's fans there, and that's a different experience. That's one of the reasons why a couple of years ago he took him out for a couple of open practices to Ames and Gilbert, and to give those guys a feel. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean it's not a game day experience, but it is different than just sitting in practice where or scrimmages where maybe a select group of folks are, are able to be there but you're going to have 
everyone can come in uh, and watch. Yeah, and obviously it. So let's go position by position. To yeah, go back to that question. Do you do you have anything else from the quarterback spot aside from? And I mean, this battle is not going to be won. To, you know, Saturday, it's going to be a, a summer long thing to see kind of who gets the number two spot. And will you truly figure that out until a few games in the year? Who knows? The yeah. right situations have to arise for any clarity, I guess, on that to be figured out. Unless, of course, it just gets out. They usually, it gets out yeah, but. they usually don't figure it out necessarily in fall camp. You get a clear number one. And obviously, based on what Rocco did last season, He's a clear number one, but remember coming out of fall camp last season, you know, it was, it was not a clear number one. No, they were neck and neck. JJ had those, JJ got those snaps and he had a couple of rushes in that game. I remember he he tucked and ran. Um, um, but, uh, you know, Rocco slowly pulled away there. We know the talent JJ Cole has, of course, um, not just from stars, but the arm talent, the, the ability to move being as big as he is um is really impressive um so yeah coach campbell was was raving about him and, and connor moberly and you know you still got the juco transfer on on, on scholarship i think tanner hughes um yep yep it was, wasn't used situationally last year but uh that that potential still exists um but i think what stands out to me is just the way rock i mean to look back i mean his numbers were really good last season but I think it just scratched the surface of what he can do based on his efficiency, his poise, the type of stuff we saw frequently from Brock Purdy. It, it feels like Rocco is already right there and can even deepen that. You know, I don't want to call it a Zen quality, but just not panicking. Um, now we're not, again, not going to see a whole lot in the spring game. I think they're, they'll probably all throw fine balls. Uh, they'll all hand it off crisply, cleanly. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's a room that everyone's excited about. And the speculation everyone has is, oh, JJ, when is he going to enter the portal? But, you know, and all indications he's, he's, well, he certainly hasn't. And, um, but you have to account for that at any, any program, there'll be attrition, particularly at that position. But right now they're high on all those guys and uh, obviously recruiting guys, uh, Alex like Mansky coming out in. of uh, Algona, uh, to be a part of that mix uh, next season as well. Absolutely. If you don't follow recruiting closely, Mansky, uh, Iowa State beat out Texas A&M to get him uh, pretty highly sought after prospects. So good problem to have in that room. Fun fact about Tanner Hughes. He's from Chico, California, home of the Gold Cup Race of Champions at Silver Dollar Speedway. Mm. That Brad Sweet and the High Limit Series now promote. That's one of the good tracks that's still hanging on in California. They used to have a ton of dirt tracks. and still They're still there. Uh, the fires are very complicated with them, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause it's mostly Northern California, right? Yeah. Like someone, that. someone like that. Somehow Stanford was still three hours from any of them. I yeah. tried, I wanted to go to one. I wanted to drag Tommy to one with me three when we were out there for women's bad, basketball. Yeah. Now uh, let's get to running backs though. Abu Sama, uh, obviously the uh, number one starter coming into this thing. Uh, I've heard Dylan Lee is making a massive impact uh, early in spring practices. I've heard, I mean, everyone I ask, he's getting better every day, just has a different motor than, you know, other running backs they've seen that in this isn't a player comparison. Don't and the person that said this to me was not comparing him to that player either. But guys like David Montgomery and the great running backs, I would say to seen Brees Hall, the, he has the same motor is kind of what I've been told. So I'm really, I'm really amped to see what he can do on the field. Yeah, Campbell mentioned him as a guy that's made some plays that pop. Um, you know, true freshman, but out of he's out a of Brock Burton, U.S. Army All American game, yeah, U.S. Army All American out of Gilbert, Arizona. Um, but I mean, don't sleep on Carson Hansen, who is, and I think Jalen. Don't um, sleep on Jalen Jackson. Jaylen We're gonna Jackson. go back and forth here. I mean, you're looking Arlen Harris Jr. Great leader from everything I've heard. I have heard that about. AJ Arlen, and, I forget what he told me. I I literally asked him like, "What, what do you want me to call you?" Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. forgot what he told me. So, but but Hanson, I think skill set as a receiver is really going to enhance what Mauser is able to do play calling wise. You know, with one year of experience under his belt, you saw it at times last year, and you saw Nate Shieldhouse implementing or utilizing him in that way, and even Abu to some extent, but. Apparently Jackson's really good at that too. 
And then you throw in how he can help in the return game with Jalen. Um, you have a lot of dynamic athletes yes. in the running back room alone. Different that sizes, help different you. strengths. Yeah, yeah, little utility pieces that you can put around your offense to enhance it. And I think that's a really big skill to have, especially all being in one position group as you know this big unit. I've heard good things about Tyler Roll, too. I heard he's he's a beast coaching wise and you know i just what i hear so don't the fans are going to come after the offensive line thing when we get there so <laughs> yeah uh but yeah I've, I've heard good things about him uh just difference maker uh being you know the new running backs coach you don't know how well guys are going to mesh you don't know how well guys are going to mesh in six months you know so um and assistant head coach i mean when we had, yeah yeah you're right good point when we had abu and, and and carson they both talked about how much you know energy and uh enthusiasm and, and knowledge he brings to the room and to them so they're really uh juiced up about it uh, as well and i think that pairs well and i i'm coming out with a story later this week on uh coach mauser uh for you guys but uh he kind of he never wants to lead in uh I'm I'm paraphrasing and I'm not saying the exact phrasing, but he doesn't want to be an intimidating like he doesn't want to lead by scaring, you know, lead by intimidation. He doesn't want to be a dictator. Yeah, yeah, essentially. And he's a high energy guy, wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's a big hockey guy as well. Um, and I, I think that meshes really well with Coach Roll and you know, as if it meshes, if it has chemistry, it's it's bound to be decent if that's a fair thing to say um but going forward you know how well uh all these guys are kind of early in their coaching careers on this offense but it all sounds like they're really working well together and i'm excited to see how that plays out going into this season with the roster iowa state's got i i do and i think the fans do too expect really big things out of this team yeah I, and and you mentioned coach roll and but you coach clanton and you you're just adding guys who have play calling experience and 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 the type of um you know as again a pretty young group overall still has a massive amount of snaps that they've called or been a hand had played a hand in calling and i know in the past they've talked about how much of the collaboration there is and anyone can bring up an idea whether they found it on social media or whatever and that's as coach mauser said to all of us is something he still welcomes as well so i think you know how creative will they be? You know they were creative at times last season, maybe not so much at times, but um, I think we'll see more of the same. But definitely with some new wrinkles, when you got new faces, you're going to get some new wrinkles and new dynamics between, you know, pre-existing and new relationships as well. I know. Uh, was it going into last season that it felt like it was a five-headed monster type of thing at running back? And that's never going to be true at any running back position, yeah. but that was kind of what was being said as every guy was really close to one another. Now it's, I mean, it's not Abu and the gang. I think they'd, I think he'd rather me say it's another five headed monster again, but even with NIL and the portal and everything that's changing, you got a recruit, a transfer uh, and three guys that were there last season. You got five there again. So yeah. really set up in a, a good spot for the running back room and, uh, we'll see how that pans out. Do you want to go tight ends or receivers next? Let's go tight ends. All right. I'm glad you brought that up to go back to Taylor Mauser. Uh, Steve yeah. O'Klotz, I think it's going to have a really good year. <laughs> Mouse loves Klotz uh, every, just about every time he's on the microphone last year. Because it's far less as the tight ends coach than it is the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Every interview I did with him, he would bring up Steve O'Klotz mm -hmm. and it wouldn't take three minutes and you didn't even have to ask about him. Uh, I think he'll use Steve-O a lot this year. I think Steve-O is going to turn into a really good player. Um, just get ready for the breakout. Well, and Steve-O is shown. I shouldn't say it, he is a good player. He's more than just a blocker. He's more <laughs> yeah. than just that F position or whatever. Kind of like hybrid fullback slash tight end. Because there, and I can't remember exactly, but I went back at some of the athletic exploits he had at Chaska, Minnesota. And, um, he did some pretty remarkable things. And I think his athleticism is going to, you know, show itself at times this season. So you can use him more. We saw him in the passing game, kind of touchdown pass last season. <clears throat> but I think we can see that more. And then when you surround him with Ben Bramer, who, if he's not going to be a, you can call him Ben or Benjamin. That was my story. He said he's fine. He's fine either. He kind of prefers Ben a little bit because, you know, when parents are mad, they I'm glad do, we're getting our name. They tend to do the Benjamin, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but I mean, 
Tyler Morbat, Gabe Burkle, they were high on him last year. A lot, a lot of a number of these guys got banged up a bit last year. Tyler Moore has gotten banged up a lot, obviously, but a lot of guys in this group. Cooper Alexander, a true freshman, was a guy that I believe Coach Campbell brought up as being extremely impressive. We heard a lot of Andrew Keller last 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 year, you know, going into the season as well. Again, injuries affected this group, and the fact that Bramer took the reins and, and became such a really good um, receiving threat but he's worked really hard to be better in the run game too. So it's going to be interesting to see how they move these pieces. Jack Bjorn, I mean, AJ Peter, a lot of people in there that that they can slot in and out. And again, that's a part of depth. That's a part of being fresh. And um, when you feel like a lot of these guys, several of these guys can be high performers, that's huge, again, at the tight end position because it gives you so much flexibility in terms of your play calling in the run and the pass. I apologize. I'm, I'm going to circle back to quarterbacks. That's fine. I'm just getting bored. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you brought up Cooper. It reminded me, Major Cantrell. I've heard he's making some plays. He's a walk-on at quarterback, uh, high school teammates, classmates with, um, I almost said Ben Brommer because I'm looking at his roster because I'm just going to pull up and bring that up. Bramer, thank you. My goodness. I'll get there, guys. I promise like you. We'll fa- like we will fast get, Freddy Raymer. We will, get, be. we will get there. The train's going to find its way back to the tracks. Uh, he was Major Cantrell was high school teammates with Cooper Alexander. They came here together. I think they're rooming together uh, as well at Iowa State, but I've heard big things about him and, and probably bigger things about Cooper and, and how big of a beast he has been for the tight ends uh, coming into things. He's the highest rated recruit uh, in all of the class last season. I think he commuted, he committed, I think, 10 minutes before hot laps at when I was at Houston's for their big race of the year. It's interesting it's how, frantically, you start, how you chart. I remember, yeah, I remember where I was at. Yeah, it's if I can, if there, if I was watching a game or doing something, I'm very much like Chris in this, and I I can tell you exactly what day that was, stuff like that. Only relative to racing, though. It depends if I was watching a race or a stars. I I can tell you where I was at when about indoor football league. Yeah, there's some of those too. too. Oh, that was the game, the Barnstormers uh, blank. Grant Rohatch beat the Nebraska Danger. Yeah, former Cyclone. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, Ben Bramer. I want to bring him up too. He's up to 240 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was in plan, obviously, if that was obvious. And he might us, even be a little bit bigger. I mean, he's, I think, probably, I think these measurements were at 250. The, yeah, at the start of spring, and I know they were building him up, right? Yep. So, and if he can take that next step, because that was, you're six, seven. I mean, JJ Cole's six, seven, 250, yep. you know, as is. Ben getting that size to him is going to help him tremendously uh, on the field this season. Yeah, and he said the main thing is putting that size on, you know, the, how good the strength staff is, how good the nutrition folks are. They're really putting on good weight. So they're really being cognizant of he moves so well that you don't want to lose one iota of that. And so far, even though he's been layering on weight, uh, presumably on pretty much all muscle, that has not negatively impacted his ability to move and, and get downfield. So uh, that's nothing but a positive because, again, he'll tell you he was – probably okay in pass pro and 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 in the run game but he wants to excel there like he did as a as a pass catcher and by all accounts he's he's well on his way absolutely uh getting over to wide receivers um i think iowa state fans have a lot to be excited about this season uh jalen noel um and as you guys uh read i think this was in the premium it, it isn't unknown information jalen noel has been uh like the unsung I, I don't want to say surprising because I feel like a leader's always been a good leader. And once you <clears throat> take that step and you're in the position to lead, then you start being a good leader, right? You don't change anything about yourself to do that mm-hmm. if you're a good leader. Um, but I've heard great things about Jalen Noel uh, being a captain for this wide receiver room. Obviously, Jaden Higgins looks like, and especially in the Liberty Bowl, uh, looked like an NFL type wide out i think he can be an nfl wide out for sure um and then you have uh isaiah alston uh benny and goey and uh daniel jackson i've heard good things about all three of them um and that's kind of your supplemental pieces at wide receiver right now uh whether they take steps up or steps i don't want to say steps down sorry yeah what whatever happens along the way um th- going into the season though you have you know five guys that kind of look like they're capable of having a really, really strong receiving core uh, to pad with this offense. 
Yeah. I mean, Jaden Higgins just missed a thousand yard season a uh, year ago. We year. thought we was we thought he was gonna get there during the Liberty Bowl, remember? Yeah, yeah just it ran out of time. <laughs> it was like the third ran sixty out of time. yard he completion just, he got. Yeah, no one could no one could uh could contend with him. A stat I put in article I wrote about I think it more centered a little bit on Noel um because he was there <laughs> that availability. But Noel tied for third nationally last season in uh receptions at 60 plus yards uh with three and higgins was tied for 19th with two so i was wrong there wasn't five, three in the liberty Bowl. well line. that's you, i think you, i meant to say 40. You hi, get the hi, point. Hi, hyper, hyperbole is okay <laughs> um because these guys they deserve it and i think higgins is morphing into a leader as well after you know getting in transferred in of course performed like he performed and they say Jalen's a bit more vocal Jaden's a bit more lead by example type but that's perfect to have your lead dogs more or less be complement each other that way and that's something they said that they feel like they do from a leadership perspective but they certainly do it from a production perspective as well and then when you forgetting what the tight ends bring in terms of receiving coach Campbell made a point to highlight Benny Nagoyi as a guy who is having a great spring two scrimmages ago did not have a really good day and then came back to their last scrimmage, the one that spanned something like 125 plays um, and just was outstanding. So that's where they're talking about trying to create ad adverse situations for guys. Some of them are going to arise organically. And it sounds like it did to some degree for, for Benny and they've been raving about him since he got on campus. I mean, and we saw some catches he made, um, I think he had a big play in the spring game last season. He might I have. I'm, I'm almost positive it could have been an open practice. Could have been the year before at an open practice. So don't quote me on either of those. If you want to go back and find, I probably tweeted it at some point. <laughs> but but yeah, they love him. Daniel Jackson being back is huge. And if you know, you hope he can stay healthy. That's you know, another that's leader guy that, too, yeah. with his story and in what he's been through to yeah. you know still be playing and he stuck around because he wanted to stick around mm -hmm. um and that's a that's a really big thing for that room especially with um all the young guys they got coming up in it and then isaiah alston with the 6'4 195 and people think akeem butler right with him you know being i don't want to say being stuck at army i think it's a military family and i think he was really proud to be at the academy there um at west point but not going to pass the ball much there. So he averaged like what 25 yards a catch. And I, yeah. He's he, making big plays all over the place. He had like respectable wide receiver transfer portal numbers while playing at Army. And yeah. I felt like that got overlooked a little bit That's, uh, out there. Yeah. And then they put the post out on social media where he's doing the one hand grab, you know, completely reminiscent of, of about the team who's now doing to get in the UFL. You wonder if you'll get another NFL chance after the last one of the Steelers didn't work out. But Either way, um, just the type of athlete you want to have on the outside. And, you know, he can play Jalen in the slot. He can swing outside if you want to. Jaden, you can play him in the slot, but he's mostly going to be outside. And then you talk about Daniel Jackson. Also, a lot of – you can put him all over the field. And then we even touched on Kai Black, Jason X, Essex, guys they were high on last year, and, and, and they've been mentioned this spring. But that's a crowded room too. And, I mean, that's a theme. I mean, they've got depth that they're happy with and it keeps growing year after year after year. And that's what you have to have if you're going to continue to pile up winning seasons after the one hiccup uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I think that's a sign of this team, right? I, I know we're cyclone fanatic and we're just talking through what we've heard and there's no reason for a coach to come up and tell me that this player sucked this spring. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's absolutely zero and no one, I probably wouldn't repeat it on here if I heard that too. Um, but no, it's, this team ha is going to have a lot of expectations. It might be, would you you would say that Purdy teams the most? And I would think that there's a few other teams that I could find, you know, going back that probably had a little bit more expectations than this team. But this team still is going to have a ton, especially with the schedule they have, the amount of you know programs they finished above last year that they're playing, and the lower amount of you know contenders or favorites going into the year assumingly um and that's pre-portal pre this summer <laughs> pre-fall camp um but as things stand you know going into the year everyone's gonna be pretty high on this team yeah i would think 
will they be picked top five in the Big 12? I think they should be. They might not be, but I think they should be based on what they have coming back. Um, what's interesting is when the expectations have been sky high, let's put it this way. That's this, why Iowa State fans shy this, away from the sky high this, expectations. This thing. team has a chance to be the first team to really live up to those expectations from a, a outcome, didn't, a result. Didn't the other teams have the same chance? They had a chance. But yeah, I'm, they didn't. I'm saying they, didn't live they, up. they have a chance to do what to the did yeah. do. Absolutely. I'm so, um, I, I confuse last, I get Rob's train off the tracks more the than last, I do my The last Purdy team ended up seven and six, right? Yeah. And um, they were loaded. Charlie Kohler still there. Really good guys on defense. Will McDonald. I mean, what, Hummel? Is that Hummel senior year? I believe so. I mean, so that's a loaded team. And that would that started the trend of losing so many close games, which extended to the next season, obviously extended in the four and eight season, mm -hmm. started to reverse that pretty significantly last season. If they can continue to do that, you know, the high expectations are, you know, there, there's a chance that they are warranted, but there's a chance that they can, you know, finally be filled again from a result standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. We, we got to pick up the pace a little bit because uh, I think we spent a lot on the first half of the offense. Haven't even gotten yeah. the offensive line yet. I've heard uh, very good things about, uh, I almost said, um, Dylan Barrett, yeah. uh, the Wisconsin transfer. I've heard he had, has came in and from day one just impressed people. Um, I I think we'll see on Saturday what the offensive line looks like. I don't I have an idea. Uh, but it's a lot of the guys are being coached to play multiple positions. I know Clanton's philosophy has always been I'm gonna coach them to play, to play everything. I don't know if that's necessarily going on because we keep hearing about uh, uh Jared Hufford's working at center. A little bit. I, I don't think every guy is necessarily learning every single position, but they're learning how to play. I think it's pretty close to that. Yeah, it's as close as it can be for sure. Um, James Neal talked about it a little bit. Um, you know, Clanton, the by the quote violence and versatility maxim that he throws out there, I think is is real. Like I said, it's not necessarily you've got you work a bunch of guys out at center because Jim Boniface uh, it was really good last year. I thought, mm -hmm. and I, I've heard he's right there toe-to-toe -to -toe with barrett not yep. not that they're going against each other to start not, he, not in that conversation but as in like uh you know how much are they impressing how much are they developing stuff like that yep. like, there's not they're not really talking about position battles you know this far away from the season at this spot yeah keys obviously the, the line up and down to put it mildly last season part of that i think was how they're meshing with true freshman running backs in the run game not pretty good in pass pro, if not very good, almost all season. But then a Dalen Hassert, who got hurt, wasn't able to really contribute. They were high on him. He's presumably fine. Um, Brendan Black uh, played at a played very, very guy, talented play, high school football loves team. football, tough as nails. They talk about him. So you're starting to see a little bit more of that depth. Hufford coming back is huge. You mentioned him. Um, we talk about Jalen Travis? <clears throat> not yet. I mean, that's... I six nine three fifteen. That's all. Yeah. I mean, let's see. In uh, Dylan Barrett six five three twenty, and there's a lot of Tyler Miller six nine three thirty five. Iowa State's got the size this year for, I think, the first time in a long time that I can remember. Everyone's been super, you know, over three hundred and yeah, you know, assumed to be pretty decent. Yeah, and we um, hear, and we hear it about every year. Sorry, to, no, no, you're good. I'm trying to think year, back because like, I'm look, thinking like there's got to like, be a team. They that look had like this. a different <coughs> football team in terms of how big, how strong, in some cases how fast they are. But um, that's what we're hearing, and um, you know that offensive line needs to take another step. And again, if it does, then these again, another, and adds another layer to these expectations being warranted and not being something to to worry about. Well, and if it if it doesn't, then we'll endure like eight weeks of BS from fans on Twitter, and then week nine against BYU, and when they just run over them, and, and, like and then they snow again. Tonight. We'll have another snow game, and they'll do the same thing, and, and we'll get the last lap. Get to a bowl game, and then they can't run again. <laughs> <laughs> they now, so the I think the line was beat up by the end of the year. That was my, you know, uneducated guess. Maybe watching from afar and just how they were moving as a unit kind of went away in the bowl game. And I don't know the reason for that. Um, but I, I thought week seven or game seven to game 12 
like they continued to get better each you know i think they took a step back in the middle there a little bit and it was kind of a roller coaster but i i thought towards the end of that season they really took steps forward yeah i think post ohio game was one of the big moments jared huffert said we've had enough and um you know they still again had some rough games including the bowl game where they couldn't move the ball on the ground but that's not all on them yeah so i'm only laughing because you just brought it up again you're good keep going sorry um, <laughs> so i think we've covered yeah on the O line. yeah no you're, you're good sorry about that defensive line uh couple of guys uh to keep your eyes on obviously uh canard snyder uh the transfer from uh, louisiana monroe um i i've heard great things he's he looks like just a monster i can't wait for him to get a sack at jack trice stadium that that will be a a fun thing to watch i i can only assume he's got a great celebration every photo on the ulm roster page when i i assume it's deleted now but i remember when i was doing research on him i was like this guy's always celebrating every shot was like him doing the big pose and yeah everything like that i can't wait to see him get out there yeah they've said a ton of great things about him and his ability not only to be mostly pertaining to the pass rush but i think i think coach campbell talked about having heavy hands in the run game and you know when you, when you can get guys at generally who are going to be on the edge that can really help and run support and not just be flying off to the side you know where the dts and the linebackers have to clean up every time that they can clean up themselves that's huge but i mean ike Ziogu last year no, we I I don't think there's a guy we've heard more good things about, yeah, and we saw some good things too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Trent, Trent Jones, they talked about him this year. Samir Hawk, I'm sure, you know, heard great things about him. You know, six three, three hundred pound redshirt freshman out of New Jersey, and then you've got you know veterans like J.R. Singleton and and Joey Peterson and Dom Orange is now a veteran. You know, as a junior, beast up the middle there. So again, a group that's that's um. Campbell said he feels really good about what they can do in terms of pass rush. And even though we don't recognize all, you know, Samuel Same, good things about him, Tyler Onyedem, Onyedem back. I mean, this is another deep group that's done a lot of good things. And, and, and we'll see again, how that translates and what the mix is like, and we'll get a glimpse of it at swing ball, but they're going to be moving a lot of guys in and out. That's coach Rashid's MO and, and he's got the guys to do it. Yeah. And I, you just, I mean, that's, eight guys uh that you just named all that have stood out in their own way and uh, miles mendes and he's made plays I yeah mean, so I mean, uh, he's he, moving to from linebacker to left end right end edge type of guy mm -hmm. um i i'm excited to see how that goes uh they like him a lot and they like his uh effort personality stuff like that that i've heard about him and doesn't mean he wasn't working out at linebacker or whatnot but he makes a position change and they've had success the staff has with changing guys positions for sure we'll see how it turns up i'm Absolutely. not claiming he's going to be the next joel landing at left edge but <laughs> we'll see what happens i guess uh i mean i'm excited to see him on the field and see what he can do uh, i've heard caleb bacon at linebacker is still winning every practice drill yeah just normal caleb bacon stuff to do yeah former walk-on obviously incredible last season whether it be tackles for loss sacks i mean getting hands on balls i mean that guy is been dynamic and again hearing great things about him again you know we saw jack sadowski start as a true freshman which is hard to do you know oh and I, how big is that now that carson willich went now with a seemingly campbell kind of left it open on yeah he, he said i'd be surprised if he wasn't out for the season but then he but then he was saying stuff like we may not have him back till next fall not just next season but next fall so yeah, that was, was that was um I think we should just safely assume that with the torn ACL that that Carson is out. If he's if he season. plays this year, the Stone Cold Steve Austin music will be. It should in be. The, yeah, it should be. But I mean, in another position where this quote unquote Campbell calls them young pups, Will McLaughlin, he's done a lot. Redshirt sophomore, you know, he's back. They're high on John Klosterman uh, out of Iowa City. Um, Cooper Eagle, uh, Iowa City High. Uh, Cooper Eagle. When I do those, yeah. if you guys in the fall, please read my stuff. Let me know what you think. Ah, uh, in the fall, I do like everyone that's committed to Iowa State. Usually, the class is just about solidified, if not completely done. As you know, aside from this guy or this guy, uh, by the time high school football season starts. So every Saturday morning, I'll look up at how guys did in high school, and I think we have a player of the game in there. I, I got to look at the format. I don't even. I don't 
or player of the week, I should say. I don't love doing that. You guys know my opinions on awards and stuff like that. But Cooper Abel just went off in high school, and I guess he's doing the same type of stuff here. But for his, he played at a one A school or eight player. I want to say Hartley Melvin Sam. That's the yeah. one. Yeah, yep. HMS Hendrick Motorsports. That's yeah, how I remember how to look it up on Barcy Bound. Shout out to those guys. Hi. Uh, but he he did everything for that school. Punter, running back, quarterback, you know, just play, guy that played every position like natural athlete. Um, I'm expecting that to come up, and I hate that Carson Willich went down, yeah. but I, I would assume that brings – I'm not saying Cooper was right there and only behind Carson Willich, but that brings Cooper – more opportunity this year. We'll see how he does. Well, Campbell made a point to bring him out as a may name him as a guy who's really, really come on and has really been impressive. So I think he had already earned a, a fair amount of playing time in his own right outside of special teams. And and uh we'll see. I mean, he still got Jacob Ellis, Zach Lovett, who was a good spy at times last year. Again, a lot of different pieces that do guys who do different things allows you to do the line changes and to, to keep everybody fresh and um you know another group campbell made a point when i asked about jack sadowski to say linebackers is a group that's been as impressive this spring a uh, well, winter into spring as as any group out there and i, I i've heard everybody just colby cratch's beast <laughs> that is what i was that's that's a quote with a name like someone. colby cratch you know you're going to be one heck of a linebackers coach <laughs> you're not going to be Don't soft you? You're not going to be soft. No, not in the least. Uh, let's get down to uh, defensive backs, uh, at least the quarter, cornerback uh, spot. John Tez Williams is, I, I've just, I mean, every time I ask about anyone, his name gets brought up. It's, I mean, he, I, we, I think there was a couple games where he was kind of behind last year. He's a little bit off, and I, I think people were quick to write off whoever was replacing Malik when he was out uh, and different things like that. Um, but why did I say Malik? I meant <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but John Tez, obviously, you know, you go through a year in the program and then the next year is kind of where you take that step. And I think people were kind of waiting on that a little bit. And I think he's outperformed everyone's expectations this spring. Yeah. I mean, and I asked him about his swagger level on a scale of one to 10. And he said, it's about, it's a 30. So, I mean, I, I don't really like the 110% stuff when people say they're going to give 110%. Well, swagger level. Because that's a good this number. Is, this is 300% of, of the top, the tippity top. So, so I, I really respect that. All right. So, over under six and a half unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Oh, see, now the swagger doesn't necessarily transfer into those types of penalties. How many interceptions do you have to have to allow to yeah. have Coach Campbell allow you to rack up seven? on sportsmanlike conducts throughout the season well i probably a dozen. double a double double the it might all, have to be like two, two to one ratio, ratio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a minimum of two to one but i don't think uh that's what he was implying no. necessarily he'll talk trash like any good corner will um but yeah nothing but good things from him again it was this redshirt freshman season last season you're playing behind tj tampa or occasionally maybe inserted him on miles side when miles wasn't out there and he made some great plays. Yeah, I didn't want to say for sure he was just out had, there on whichever end. Had some not so great. And then plays. I said Malik instead of TJ's name. Yep, and that's fine. Um, but to have him with an experienced senior like Miles Purchase on the other side, Miles who went through his own, you know, low point last season came back really strong. Um, both big guys, thick guys, five eleven. So you're not don't have all the length. But oh, by the way, you've got Darian Porter now more experienced at the corner position. It can be mixed in back there at six four with his wingspan and his speed and his that guy knows football frontwards backwards every which way now and they're extremely high on him too not to mention a ton of young guys too so i think they feel really good at corner despite losing a guy of tj tampa's caliber but um remains to be seen because you know darian still hasn't had a lot of snaps at corner and he was really good at times he had a couple where he didn't quite react Maybe you want to just like John Tez, but I mean that added experience again. The winter, spring, so those, many guys. They're that, really high on those guys, and so many guys that you know they were there last year, but they weren't necessarily there. That get another year under their belt in the same program, coming back to a roster they were at last year in this era of NIL and transfer yeah. portal and all that stuff. Very rare 
And that's kind of a, a big proponent of the big expectations that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will go into Bo Freeler, Jeremiah Cooper, and Malik Verdon are all also back. Yeah, that's a pretty massive. Good, that's a pretty good core uh, yeah. for your safety group. And, um, <clears throat> you know, they like the young guys there too. In fact, uh, is, that your Bo, top, is that your top three players on the defense? I think. I think you have if to I say, had to power rank I think, them like I gun think, to my I head. Think, I think you have to yeah. say yes. Um, with the caveat of Malik, of course, never not being able to remotely get in a full season so far. But if he can again do that, you know, he gives you that length out like a like a porter, but it, a, a extreme, um extremely aggressive both against the run and, and in defending the pass. And he stays healthy, man. That that safety, I mean you saw them get exposed a few times on deep balls last year where, but, but sometimes it was, they were there and they just get tangled up a little bit. I mean, I, 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 and and we, we all saw what Cooper did in terms of interceptions. Freeler got his share. Those guys are going to be ball Hawks again. And, and that's just an incredible dynamic to have when you're working in some younger guys like Jamison Patton into the D D back room, who was really good at times last year too. Drew Sergis, the former walk on, um, a lot of guys in that group that they're high on. Again, that's our theme. That's spring, right? <laughs> We're not going to sit here and go, oh, but the offensive line this. But I, pass, I hope that someone, that. someone's going to message me and be but like, in, in, really, in, could, I, could you give a little constructive criticism in, to anybody? In spring, or? hope springs eternal, and and there's really no, there's nothing to refute it. There's no – I wish they will be say. undefeated for the next – in football for the next four or five months. For quite a while. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> winning seasons, what? Since 2017, there's only been one losing season. There so. have, that is that is I, that you're doing a real stat. I'm doing so, the I'm doing the baseball team stat. So the proof's kind of in the pudding. But you know, again, not going to learn much. But uh, all those names we mentioned, which is a lot of names, they're really high on all those guys. So I think it'll be fun to watch not just the the frontline guys come in that you know, but guys you don't know, and then even a layer beyond that, guys that we are not even talking about. That are going to start to get reps and start to work their way into special teams units and all those things. Absolutely. And there is one thing that I think we can for sure look for on Saturday. See if Kyle Conrardi can hit a long field goal. I'm sure they'll, they situationally will just go practice. I mean, that's what field goal kickers are supposed to do. I know it's a spring game. They're yeah. not trying to win the game. There will be a situation. Uh, and I've heard this kid's a stud. Uh, I've heard very good things about Conrardi. Uh, in just what he's been able to do so far in practice. I know Chris tipped you guys off on that in premium as well, uh, but just it's tough to land like on a really good walk on and like Caleb Bacon and then go back to, well, Surges obviously as well. And then the other kickers that Iowa State's had that have been walk ons that panned out. And yeah. it's really crazy what the staff has been able to do with walk ons and. I'm excited to see Conrady kick in game action. Yeah, I mean, kicking game last year was one of the big reasons that that special teams was so much significantly better. You know, probably quadrupled the number of touchbacks. You know, so you'd take away those return opportunities. You know, they were leaving so many short the previous season, and and it just bit them. Well, and I think what six, seven games where he's almost automatic. Why can't Contreras? Thank you. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he had the. Uh, the fake, the fake was play. 13 or 14 that was at cool. One point, yeah, I think, over there was. Yeah. Yes, you're exactly right. In Big right. Twelve play. Yes. Um. I yeah, and I don't. I think he might have missed one in the Ohio game, if I remember I think right. So. Uh but it, I think it was after that when that stretch started. But I mean, I was Steve. I hope you guys appreciated Chase Contreras while he was here because yeah. I know. The people that have been watching Iowa State football as long as we have have been dreaming of a season like that from a kicker. Yeah, as well since me since Colbert, Cur- Mevis. Colberson. Me- yeah, yeah, Mevis is there. I agree. I what screws me up is I was so young and impressionable <laughs> when Colbertson was a senior. I I think he's the greatest kicker oh, okay. of all time, yeah. and that's just like how it is in my head because I I've never gone back and looked at his stats. Like, don't want to meet my hero. Yeah, I just want to keep it up there like he's viewed as like if you can go out and not miss a field goal all season then you you pass brett in my eyes in my what was i 10 years old yeah me nine was, years old when me he was, was playing. Where they chanted his name after winning at kansas state that's the memory i'll always have they were chanting the name of the kicker <laughs> you don't hear that every day you don't no 
But um, it's, yeah, it's yeah, so harder. To, a good, I mean, special teams should again be pretty good. Coverage units have I don't think have ever been that off um, under Cam, but certainly there have been those mistakes, whether it be in the kick game or whether it be punts getting blocked and all that. And it feels like they started to clean up a lot of those things last season uh, and uh, look like, you know, they're on track to, to continuing to do better in those areas this season as well. Yeah. If you've gotten this far in the podcast, I know you're a diehard. So you, you guys out there listening still probably know uh, about the special team situation, just because there isn't a bona fide special teams coach. Uh, I think they're working on it more as a staff and different coaches have different inputs which that's how they want to do it. Um, that, But that's why there isn't a special teams coach, because that's what when there was last season. There was last season, yes. And, and so if special it, teams there's take still room back, to improve fans there. are going to say, well, you didn't have anyone devoted. But again, also was running backs coach. So, I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, he was, he was doing halves and halves. Yeah. He, so, I, I mean, he would spend all his energy on Abu Sama. The, the, the bottom, I'm, the I'm bottom kidding, line is the whether there is a named special teams coach person that i would say coordinator yes. whatever you want to call it there's always a lot of people um working together in that regard uh whether again whether there's a title for it or not and you get tyler perkins back not too shabby yeah, of a punter pretty good yeah didn't he outkick tory taylor a few times last year he did i think we had a total yard scoreboard going like three weeks in the season <laughs> just as a joke i always play around with stuff i'm like do i want to light the cyhawk fire on twitter oh, today <laughs> Perkins was I don't think really good as a freshman, even better last season. And oh, if he takes another step, we're going to have to expand Jack Tri Stadium. Yep. He's <laughs> kicking the ball too far. It might not be worth that expense. He can maybe use a little bit of touch to drop it inside the 10 a little bit more frequently, but he's good at that already. But wow, we've really uh, been up the rails here, Connor. Thanks to you. All right. Hey, I wanted to cover every corner of this spring game, and I think we did it thanks to uh, the guys at A Plus Natural Lawn Care. Absolutely. Appreciate them for uh, sponsoring, and uh, thank you guys for listening. Are, are you, we good? You got anything else? I think we're good. We talked about returners a little bit with, with Jalen and, 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 uh, and Jalen. So <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Well, we will uh, hopefully we see you guys out at the spring game Saturday. Stop us and say hi. I'm sure we'll, be, we'll try to match our hats again. This is a good touch, Rob. Absolutely. I'm excited for it. Cannot wait for Saturday. Hope to see you guys at Jack Trice Stadium, uh, 11 a.m. kickoff. And uh, thanks again for listening. Appreciate y'all.